Get ready for the smackdown Get ready for the smackdown How you gonna react when you're put in the back Cause there's no turning back when you're facing the smackdown Hey poses Welcome to this week's Smackdown in a Shot Glass, brought to you by Grumpy Cheeto. Don't forget to check out WrestlingRevolution.com for all your reviews, all of your news, all of your chats on Monday night. Join us on Monday nights, man. We have fun. We're going to be ripping Raw and Impact apart. But let's jump right into the show. Tonight we had a huge amount of material. Six promos, six matches. Holy crap. So... Let's get right into it. We kick off the show because SmackDown's in my backyard of Wichita, Kansas. An in-ring promo with Edge coming out and saying that he's concerned. I'd be concerned too if I came back early from an Achilles, Achilles tendon tear and wrestled three weeks in a row. I'd be really concerned, Edge, that you're not going to make it to WrestleMania. Um... Not much to this promo. He's pushing the spear thing a little too much. He's like, why is the Jericho Edge feud based on a spear? You know, there is a world title there. Maybe. Come on, a little bit. Anyway, so Big Show comes out and he says, oh, I'm your opponent tonight and yada yada. And you need to be concerned about me and I'm going to knock you out. And um, then Big Show says, I eat pieces of crap like you for breakfast. And then he just says, wait a minute. That explains a lot. You eat pieces of crap for breakfast? PG humor sucks, okay? That was not funny. Maybe the 13 to 12, 11, 10, 9 year olds thought that was funny. Not me. Uh uh. Ugh. So, anyway, then, um, the whole time, you know, and just talking about spears and everything, and all I wanted to hear was Matt Stryker say, Gore! 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 But, you know, they keep on saying spear. So, I don't know if they're just trying to do the, the gore thing. I don't know. All right, so we go to a backstage promo in the back with Drew McIntyre and Teddy Long. And uh, Teddy Long says that per Vince McMahon, Drew McIntyre's defeat last week has been expunged. And he's now undefeated again. It's going to be in a match next. whoop de doo Match one of the night. Drew McIntyre versus Matt Hardy. Nothing really notable in this match. You know, Drew and... Matt went back and forth. This is a Money in the Bank qualifier, so I figured they might put a little bit of extra effort forth. But not really. This is actually a pretty below par matchup for Fat Hardy and Drew McIntyre. Um, you know, as I said, it wasn't that great of a match. I give this match two out of five Red Rangers. And uh, I like the quote at the end that uh, Todd Grisham said. He's like, Drew McIntyre losing for the first time again. I thought that was actually a classic line there by him. So Next we go backstage with John Morrison and Slam Master J where they're talking about abs. I mean, I know John Morrison's got an eight pack, but I mean, seriously, you don't have to, you don't have to talk about that. That's okay. Then uh, R-Truth comes in and he starts throwing out some tag team names for the tag teams, which is actually pretty good. You know, that's something that tag teams have lost nowadays. You know, making names for each other. I mean, you know, Show Miz... And I guess Jerry's show, but it's like, you know, sometimes they just throw people together and they're like, you know, it's like Mark Henry and MVP. I like Classic's name for him. Basketball Kool-Aid. That's a great name. Um, my preferred pick for their tag team name that they gave was a Black Magic and White Shadow. Just my opinion. We go to match two of the night, which is the gold standard Shelton Benjamin versus Mr. Ziggles, Dolph Ziggler. Um, another... A below par match, especially for these two. Um, there was a nice monkey flip that Dolph Ziggler gave to Shelton out of the corner, but then like Dolph or Shelton reversed it, and then Dolph got put into a backbreaker by Shelton, and it was pretty cool. But I mean, it was just and there was at the end that you know Shelton went for the uh, Shelton went for the pay dirt, botched it again this week, and he still got the win. So I give this two out of five Yellow Rangers for the gold standard. 
Match number three, I'm going to be introducing to you a new rating system for this one. Um, it was a squash match between Ezekiel Jackson and Jimmy Wang Yang. Zeke finally making his debut on ECW. It was a squash match. Pretty good. Um, I give it three out of five Alpha Fives. So if you have a squash match, it's probably going to be an Alpha Five rating. Um, the reason why I give it three out of five is not because those are great matches. because Jimmy Wang Yang actually got some offense in. It wasn't like Zeke came out and just killed him. Yang actually got some offense off. They, tr they didn't treat it like a squash. It was more like, you know, he actually had a little bit of chance. So, um, I don't know why they didn't let Zeke come out with the ECW title on. I think that would have been really cool. You know, just for him to hang on to it for a couple weeks. And uh, at the end, Jimmy Wang Yang uh, came off for a cross body. And then uh, his big Zeke caught him. And then threw him into the Uranagi. Hit a picture perfect. Uranagi slam on Jimmy Wang Ying, and Zeke gets the one, two, three, ding, ding, ding. Then we go backstage again. This time it's with Rey Mysterio and his daughter, and then guess who walks in? My girl, Tiff. Tiff is on SmackDown. I am happy. A little disappointed that Zack Ryder's on Raw, but, and Christian's on Raw, but Tiffany, the golden egg of ECW, is on SmackDown. All right, I knew I picked the right case when I got SmackDown. All right, um, that leads into our fourth match of the night, which is Rey Mysterio versus Luke Gallows. This match was actually really good. Like I was expecting kind of a squash for Rey Mysterio, but this match was probably the match of the night. Um, shut up, Bert. Um, they. You know, it was just great. I mean, there was a lot of back and forth action. Um, it actually looked like Luke Gallows was putting a good effort forward. He really impressed me. Um, but in the end, Rey Mysterio reversed. Uh, the Luke Gallows went for a power bomb, but then Rey Mysterio did a he shifted his weight and did a, a sit down senton for the win. So, I give it four out of five. Black Rangers. Moving to our backstage promo is. Jericho and the Big Show, and all I gotta say about this promo is, it is the ambiguously gay duo moment of the night. The Only because Croft and Beretta hasn't been on TV in two weeks, so I needed to use the graphic for something. Um, moving on now to match five, which was a real pretty good match actually, was the Heart Dynasty versus Crime Time versus Black Magic and White Shadow, R-Truth and John Morrison. It was a number one contenders match for the tag titles and the shot at WrestleMania. This was a, a re another stellar match. They had two stellar matches in a row. Um, the only problem was this match did not have enough time. They needed to give this match way more time for these six guys to just go. Um, in the beginning, it was Shad and Morrison starting off, and Shad hit a beautiful spine buster on Morrison. I'll tell you what, Morrison may have taken a lot of brunt in this in this match, but. He, he sold everything perfect. Um, D.H. Smith came in, and he did uh, some great ring work, also hitting a triple belly-to-belly -belly suplex. The third one he did, the, 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 the overhead belly-to-belly, -belly, perfect. Um, at the end, it was R-Truth hitting the lie detector. That's a stupid name for him. And especially, it's like a flying forearm with a spin. Whatever. Um, on Tyson Kidd, and he got the one, two, three, and we're going to see the... This is going to be our dark match for WrestleMania, probably. R-Truth and John Morrison versus Show Miz. I give this tag team match three out of five Pink Rangers. Only pink because of the Hart Dynasty. And, you know, even though it didn't get enough time, I thought it was still pretty good. Next, we go to the final promo of the night backstage with Team Layful and Vicky Guerrero. Uh, they're doing their normal beautiful people rip-off stuff. And then uh, Beth Phoenix come in, comes in from behind and says... I'm asking for my women's title match, which I think is pretty nice since Beth Phoenix could probably rip all three of them a new one and kill Vicky Guerrero. And uh, so then Vicky says that she's the most dominant diva in, uh, in on SmackDown. And it's like, oh, you are asking for problems, lady. Okay, promo in the back, I guess. Next we go to the main event of the night is Big Show versus Edge. Pretty under-delivering main event. You know, it's Edge and Big Show went back and forth a little bit. Edge had a spear on, um, you know, Edge had a bunch of reversals on the Big Show. They basically buried the Big Show in this match. And um, then Edge hit the spear on Big Show, and he got the three count. 
Jericho came out afterward, tried to hit Jer uh, Edge with the belt. Edge ducked and then speared Jericho. And you close out the show with Edge standing and pointing at the WrestleMania sign at the end. Um, I give the main event a 2 out of 5 Green Rangers. And the show overall, I give it about 3 out of 5 Blue Rangers. They kind of crammed a lot. Six promos and six matches. I get one's a swash match, but, eh, you know, they didn't give enough time to the matches they needed to. And it just kind of, there was all, I want to say it was all over the place. It was pretty well booked of a night, but there was just too much. So, a lot of promos. I could have done without some of the promos. That's pretty much how it rolls out. Anyway, thanks for joining me for this week's SmackDown review. Please check out WrestlingRevolution.com. And I'm Grumpy Cheeto, and I am out.